What can we learn from the computer? Using technology to seek comfort. Suffering because of technology. Our age is one in which we use machinery to do what was formerly done by our hands. Because of this, life today is far more convenient than even 25 years ago. From things like cooking and washing, to getting around and communicating with others, life has become far more comfortable. When our technological age began, everyone looked to the future with rose-colored glasses. We all speculated on what we would do with our surplus time when it became possible to buy a gadget which would cook our meals with a flip of a switch. When mankind is released from physical toil and household drudgery, we said, we will be truly free and live as men and women were meant to. However, contrary to our expectations, such a rose-colored age did not come into being. We seem to live in an age which is busier and more rude than ever. What happened? We developed technology to live more comfortable lives, and yet, because of technology, our suffering has increased many times. The automobile, which was created to make transportation easier, spurts out deadly fumes which make it dangerous for us to breathe. In all spheres, our age is the richest in history of the world. We are engulfed in a flood of technology and leisure. Yet we are setting new records in the amount of crime, traffic accidents, and the number of patients seeking psychiatric help. If our present age is one in which we use machinery to take the place of our hands, the coming age is one in which we will use machinery to take the place of our minds or the logical processes. It has been characterized as the age of the information explosion. Our daily newspaper has increased the number of its pages to where we cannot keep up with it. The average number of pages in the Los Angeles Times every day is over 100. The Sunday edition is about 500 pages. We have our weekly magazines, technical journals, and bulletins from organizations to which we belong. If we add to this trying to help our children with their homework, keeping up with all the information constantly confronting us becomes an almost impossible task. But there are still the radio and television broadcasts with their entertainment and news, and particularly their flood of commercials to overwhelm us. A device has been invented to help us manage the immense amount of information constantly inundating us. As you know, this device is the computer. Even small companies now make use of this device to help manage the details of their business. The Japanese National Education Television Network has a program titled Diagnosing Japan, which makes use of a computer in analyzing various aspects of Japanese life. On one program, the computer was fed various data about modern Japanese society and then asked the question, Will anxiety decrease in our society? The answer was quite contrary to what was expected. Without doubt, it will increase, the computer answered. Asking the computer how to live. A scientist once programmed a computer to answer the following question. In an uneasy age where we are constantly flooded with information and dependent on mechanical devices to survive, what is the best way to live? The computer's answer was short and to the point. Select only those things that are truly important. Isn't this a most suitable answer? Whether it is a television program, a book, a job, the form of entertainment, Regardless of what it is, select only the best or most important. When we stop to consider it, we always seem to be pushing off to one side the most important question of our life that must be answered. We evade this most important question by raising the status of questions and problems of lesser importance and allowing them to occupy our thoughts. When we are young, it is getting a date, our schooling or whether we can make the team. When we grow a little older, it is the job we hold, or getting married to the right person. Then, 
it becomes worrying about our children. When we get older still, it is worry about our health or our retirement. There is no time when we are not worrying about something. But isn't there something that must be solved or decided before anything else? Suppose there are five problems in a math test which must be solved in an hour. What sequence would you follow in taking the test? Start with the easiest problem. Once you have solved that and know you will get some kind of grade, you will be able to concentrate on the next most difficult problem more easily. Leave the most difficult problem until the very last, and if there is time remaining, try tackling it and getting 100%. This is probably the way you were taught to take a test in school. However, the test you receive in the classroom of life must be solved in exactly the opposite order. If you leave the most difficult question until the very last, there is no assurance that you will have time to solve it. This is how life is. No one can foretell when the bell ending the examination of life will ring. Do not dally in solving the greatest problem. Long before computers were even thought of, the admonition presented above was repeated over and over in Buddha Dharma. What is the greatest problem? What is the reason this person known as I was born? Upon what should I base my life? What happens when my physical body disappears? There are some who quickly answer the first question by saying, My purpose in living is to work. Are they any different from ants who conscientiously perform their daily work for the benefit of the hive? There are others who say they work only to raise their children properly. But it is wrong to live your life through your children. They have their own life to lead. The first thing you must do is to be able to answer the three questions given above. When you can, you will have laid the foundation for a life which will continually unfold and grow into something beautiful.